everybody, this is Brawlfan1, and today I'm doing something a little bit special. So, for those who may not have already heard as of yet, Pokemon Unite's anniversary is coming up, and one of the announcements that they have officially revealed is a Pokemon, a specific Pokemon that's coming up pretty soon, none other than Tyranitar. Now, this is a special case for me, specifically, unlike some of the previous Pokemon that have come out, because Tyranitar actually is a Pokemon that I've already made a concept for it pretty early on, too. It was actually the third ever concept that I made after Flygon and Mewtwo. I didn't really think to do this when Aegislash came out. I was actually given this idea, and I liked it so much I figured I'd give it a shot. But I also figured, you know what, why don't I also bring on the person who gave me this idea, and why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi everybody, my name is Karashi, and uh, yeah, I am a Pokemon Unite YouTuber, make videos, and have worked with Brawlfan with some of these concepts. And so yeah, we're going to be doing something really, really fun surrounding Tyranitar's kit, specifically with uh, Brawlfan's concept and the soon-to-be-released Pokemon. Yes, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're kind of going to give you guys something a little bit special. Because this was an early concept for me, it feels like a shame to kind of just throw it out. I figured something fun we can do. We can go over the concept, you know, kind of just, kind of just casually. I'll go over it with Crashy, so you guys will kind of get a little bit of an inside look of Crashy and my process when it comes to going over these concepts. And then after we go over the concept, Crashy and I will look at the actual, like, leaked moves that Tyranitar is actually going to have in its official moveset in Unite. And as of yet, Crashy and I have actually not seen the official list yet, so this is going to be a, a kind of a fun little surprise where once we go over the concept, we'll compare it to the, like, to the real thing and see how it stacks up. Yeah, I actually have been kind of dipping and dodging spoilers for it because I, I knew that at some point I was going to do some kind of recording for it, and then this came up, so I'm excited to, to take a look at it. I know one piece because it gets, like, you know, easily spoiled on, like, Twitter and on YouTube uh, titles and things like that, but, uh, yeah, Brawlfan, I say let's go ahead and get into the concept. Yeah. All right. So, jumping right into it. Uh, so Tyranitar. So I guess I guess uh, the one thing that I the one thing that we do know about Tyranitar officially happens to be the same the very same thing that I I, I know for a fact that I did with my concept the roll. I made Tyranitar an all rounder, and we know that Tyranitar actually is going to be an all rounder. So that was pretty cool that that that, um, that ended up being similar. I I kind of figured that'd be the case too on in in general because generally when I try to um assign Pokemon roles, I go based on like what what logically makes the most sense to me, and Tyranitar is a monster like it's literally described as a pokemon that's it's a, it's effectively the godzilla of pokemon it, it, it's a it rampages it's powerful enough to destroy mountains like it, it, it's like it's literally described as, as a pokemon where it's like after it goes on a rampage maps need to be redrawn <laughs> like like it, yeah, it's it pretty, is a beast uh, so it's a pretty commanding pokemon and um you know i actually didn't know much about this pokemon prior to getting into unite and like having people say like oh i really hope they see this one come for it but um like come out with it but um it seems like it's pretty popular and it seems like people are pretty excited for it it is very popular like um and, and what actually kind of shocked me was that um in terms of like the requests that i've gotten to uh to make a video for it it actually wasn't a whole lot which i guess kind of shocked me which by the way um i guess to quick quickly get this out of the way uh once uh once we're all done with everything at the end of the video, I will go. I will go over the first twenty people that did request for the uh, for Tyranitar to be given a move set from me. So if you want to hear that, stick around. In anyway, any which case, uh, getting back into the concept. So, all rounder figured a melee attacker, a pretty safe assumption. Uh, evolutions Larvitar, uh, which becomes into uh, Pupitar, at le which I figured level five, and then finally Tyranitar level nine. Uh, yeah. So, for its ability, I figured it could be none, none other than Sandstream. Now, normally in the Pokemon games, this is kind of the equivalent to, like, Ninetales' Snow Warning, where it creates a, um, like, a weather condition. But in Tyranitar's craze, it doesn't, it doesn't cause hail, it causes sand. Or sandstorm, I should say. Uh, but the ability that we decided, that I decided for, uh, for this, for this Unite concept, uh, whenever, whenever Tyranitar takes damage, a small sand trap is left behind in the spot where Tyranitar was standing at the moment it took damage. Foes who step in this, in this spot take small chip damage, and the user takes reduced damage while standing in the spot. This ability can only be used once every 15 seconds. Around, around that time, general time anyway. Nice, yeah, I like this one. So, um, just for clarity, I haven't actually even seen this concept either, so I'm getting a first look at both of these. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. It's got, a, like, a dual effect to it. I love things that are, like, not super black and white, per se, on concepts. I like things that have, like, a little bit of nuance, so you have to kind of, like, okay, this could be used offensively, it could be used defensively. Um, so it's cool to see that you, you gave it kind of, like, that, that dual purpose to it. 
Okay. Um, but th but then yeah, um, Tyranitar is one of the few Pokemon actually where uh, its evolutions have totally different abilities up to getting its final ability. Mm -hmm. uh, so as Larvitar, its first stage, it would have started with Guts, which is an ability that would raise it, its attack whenever if it's ever afflicted with a status effect. And then as Pupitar, it would have Shed Skin, where it cuts the inf the time it's inflicted with status effects in half. Wow, that's really good. Okay, so as for its basic attacks, so when I was conceptualizing um, Tyranitar, I really wanted to emphasize it, like, it, its nature as like as, as like a rampager. Um, and I figured a good way to do that would kind of go off the same, kind of the same notion that Garchomp has, because Garchomp's also a pretty big rampaging Pokemon. Um, so I figured that, like, I, I wanted to give it stacked attacks, so very much like Garchomp, you know, where, you know, you keep attacking, and you, and, you're, and you you gain boosted stacks as you go, and the more boosted stacks you have, the more powerful you become. Uh, but unlike Garchomp, because one thing I, I, I'm kind of disappointed about with Garchomp is that they don't really, like, work off of those stacks. Like, I feel like it's a pretty important part of its kit, but it doesn't really get a chance to take advantage of those. Like, all, all yeah. it's good for is just, you know, it has attacks to help it build up the stacks, but that's it. After that, you just mash the A button and that's it. So I wanted to have a Pokemon that could not only build those same kinds of stacks, but actually be able to work off of them as well. Um, yeah, I know that sounds good. A little bit more nuance. Yeah. In, in this case, though, the stacks, like, while while you gain the stacks, the, I figured you can gain the stacks the same way as, as, um, as Garchomp. Uh, they would work a tad differently. So, like, for, in, in, in this case, for Tyranitar, I figured each boosted stack speeds up the user's basic attack speed, which is, is like Garchomp. But once it has those those maxed out stack uh, stacks, which I figured could be five, uh, attacks landed after the stacks are maxed out deal more damage and reduce the amount of damage that the user takes while attacking. Okay. Okay, so then for the actual move. So, first starting move is Larvitar, Rock Throw. Throws a single rock into a straight direction. It adds a stack to its basic attack. So it's just a quick little projectile move. Oh, cool. Other move, Stomping Tantrum. Stomps the, stomps the ground, causing a mini quake around itself. After using, using this, after using a move that failed to hit, any target doubles its damage. It can also add a stack to its basic attack, too, if the last move missed. Very cool. Okay, so then level 5, when it becomes uh, Pupitar, is when it can replace uh, Rock Throw with its first set of moves. The first is Stone Edge. Stomps the ground to cause the Lagomites to shoot out of the ground one at a time in a row forward, with the final one being the largest. Each one deals damage, but the largest one deals the most damage and has the highest critical hit chance. You can use the aiming reticle to determine how far away the largest one emerges with, with, within its max range. The more stacks you have when using this move, the higher its crit chances. I like that. And then when upgraded at level 12, slightly increases the max range, and it will now come out faster when you have maxed out stacks. Okay, so yeah, I definitely see like this energy that you're doing with the stacks, and and this is like I think whenever it comes to concepting, and me and you have done this on some of the other characters, like building in passives or even just like move synergies, it's it's such a fun way to play the character because it, it forces the player to like make decisions, right? Like you can save up more of your stacks, you can you know use it if you feel like you need to, um, and it just gives like a slight bit of depth to the character. So right. yeah, that's really really fun. Okay. And then the other, the other move, as opposed to Stone Edge, can be Crunch. Does a powerful short-ranged bite forward that will lower enemy defense. Deals more damage the more when you have more stacks, and it also adds a, stacks, a stack per player hit. And then when upgraded at level 12, increases its base damage, and landing this while your stacks are maxed out, are maxed out cuts its cooldown in half. That's really cool. So I, I figured crunch can be like a, a powerful like assassination move, like literally like like you, you use this when you see that they're low, like a, a really strong just burst hit. And yeah, it's like, no, I, yeah, I see that. Come on, can execute. Yeah. Okay. So then level eight is when it can is is when it gets um is when it can replace stomping tantrum with its with, with its other set of moves. Uh, first of which is payback. Puts it into a state where being dealt damage continually increases its movement speed per hit it takes, adds stacks to its basic attacks per hit it takes, 
and heals the user a bit for each basic attack it lands. Its other move can be used during this. That's cool. That kind of reminds me of, um... It almost kind of reminds me of, like, an Outrage in a sense, but just in its own way. Like, it's going to be increasing movement speed per hit it takes. Um, but not, like, because Outrage does anything like that, just because of, like, the, the state that, like, Dragonite goes into whenever he's outraging. Like, it really wants to, like, get in and fight while it's outraged. Right. Um, so it definitely reminds me of something like that, where you're just going to kind of, like, pop payback and then run in to take some hits and then kind of, like, get in there and, and do as much damage as you can. Yeah. And then when upgraded at level 13, the state just lasts a little longer than usual. Yeah. Okay. And then the other move, Thrash. Its stacks automatically max out. It deals a large amount of it deals a large amount of increased I'm sorry. Its stacks automatically max out and it deals a large amount of increased damage. This lasts for as long as as the user can hold on to the stacks. Once the stacks wear off, its mu its its movement speed is cut in half. So yeah, that's a big uh, kind of like power spike that, that leads to the movement speed getting cut in half. Yeah. And when it's upgraded, it no longer loses the movement speed after the, the attack concludes, and the, stacks now, and the stacks now naturally take a little longer to wear off, even if this move isn't being used. Its other move can be used during this. Nice. That's almost like giving it like the just like a passive upgrade as well, yeah. which is uh, like a good way to kind of support the character. So yes, yeah, so I figured like payback is literally like a more defensive option where it, it's more more of like a count like a counter where it relies on you getting attacked in order for it to be stronger, whereas thrash is just all out you you're going in for all or nothing damage. Yeah, for sure. Just really like maxing out the stacks and trying to get in there. Yeah. All right, and then for the unite move, uh, learned at level nine as soon as it evolves, landscape obliteration erects a large mountain-like boulder in front of itself, which it immediately smashes into pieces. The boulder being erected causes all foes o o over it to be knocked into the air and take damage. The boulder being smashed deals big damage to all foes within range, and small damage to those just out of range, but are close enough to get hit by the debris. Opponents who were tossed by the boulder initially will also be tossed away once the, once the user smashes the boulder. Very cool big area denial kind of uh, strong initiation or like mid fight disruption would be really cool okay so I guess o overall like um, so that, that, that's the end of the concept so overall Crash mm -hmm. like what, what are your thoughts on it uh, I mean I like it it, it sounds like a uh, like I said it, it definitely reminds me of the of the kind of Garchomp outragey style where you really just want to like build yourself up get in there and then try to to do some damage which is very reminiscent of essentially what an all-rounder is trying to do right you need to be tanky enough to kind of get in there and and fight but also be able to like peel your own back line or push their back line so it, it definitely I, I see kind of like the move set path like you like you said you have like a defensive or a more like offensive option and uh it seems fun i mean it, it seems like it could be <laughs> just like the better of the all-rounder like the auto attacking all-rounder kind of like archetype for yeah for that class yeah because Especially with the stacks too, because yeah, because like I said earlier, like one one thing I'm a little I'm a little disappointed in with Garchomp and for Desi with Decidueye as well, for that matter. They both have this same stacking gimmick, but they don't really get a chance to like properly utilize it. So. Yeah, exactly. It, it it's kind of just like thrown on there, and like yeah, when you're ramped up, you're ramped up, but like, how does that actually affect the character? And it's like, well, it doesn't. Like their their moves are basically unchanged. It's just like a separate system. Yeah. And with this, you've, you've kind of built in that, that synergy, which I think is a bit more fun. It's a it's a bit more nuanced. It kind of, like, gives the player, um, it, like, it forces the player to make decisions, which kind of, like, raises the skill ceiling of the character a little bit. But at the same time, it, it's, in, it's like, very intuitive with what the moves are trying to accomplish. Yeah, like, it, it's a bit more of what, um, actually what Aegislash kind of became. Which is yeah. funny, because Aegislash came out uh, after, I, after I made this move set. So, I, I, I actually... Even though Aegislash ended up being very different from the concept that I thought of for Aegislash originally, I'm still pretty happy with how Aegislash turned out in the game. But yeah, literally, like you build up your stacks with Aegislash, and you have to be able to utilize them properly, otherwise you're gonna you're gonna get blown away. Yeah. No, yeah, it's it. it like, yeah, I think that's a perfect way of explaining it. Aegislash has 
such interplay with the boosted autos. If you if you can't manage them, if you don't know how to manage them, you're you're you just are simply not unlocking the potential of the character. So yeah, it would be very similar uh, to that where you know you if you're not managing your stacks and you're not actually keeping track of like how many you have and how to use them, then you're just going to be missing out on on potential. So. Yeah. All right. So I guess cool. So that so that was the so that was uh, my Tyranitar concept. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at what's actually going to come up from Tyranitar, and let's hope that I, I'm I'm not expecting it to I'm not, obviously not expecting it to be identical to this concept because this is just yeah. personally what I would like to see, um, but I'm hoping at the very least the theming is still there. Like I want I want to see Tyranitar be a monster. I want it to see it rampage. I, I, that's what I want to see of Tyranitar. Yeah, exactly. And again, the fact that like neither one of us has seen it. I again I, I know a little bit about the Unite move because that one was hard to avoid but I really don't know much else like in terms of what abilities they actually give it. So, all right, let's go on ahead and take a look at it. I just sent it your way. Okay, so this, this, this was given to you by uh, Teeds. All right, so let's this see This was here. given to me from Super Teeds. And, and yeah, so this is definitely a leak. So I, I think for the sake of saying for anybody that's watching, it, it could change. The values could change. The actual abilities could technically change. It is unreleased. Um, but most likely this is what's going to be coming into the game. And, and even with the one-year anniversary trailer, we've actually seen a couple of it. Like we've seen the passive and we've seen one of the abilities. So it's pretty safe to say that... Uh, it's most likely pretty accurate. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, so it's passive. Sandstream. Okay, that's what I figured. Summons a sandstorm around the Pokemon every time it uses an ability, increasing the Pokemon's defense and special defense by 65% and deals damage to near my Pokemon. Okay, so that's, that's actually not too far off of my concepts, kind of. Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't... It, it, it has to use an ability, not not take damage. But overall, though, like, um, yeah. So, so it just says summons it around itself. So, like, it does it, like create like a, itself a shield is that what it's saying here i wouldn't say like a shield but it's more like an aoe sandstream that is sitting under your feet surrounding you so like it, it most likely it, there's two ways that they could do this just from like the mobus perspective when you use an ability it either sits still in place where you used it or it follows you i would be willing to bet that the sandstream is going to be attached to your feet following you okay. so like as you use an ability you you move forward you're going to be carrying that sandstream with you um which will you know deal damage to nearby pokemon and then and then give you that defense increase which that's kind of like the big part of it for me the defense sp defense um that's that's a lot you're right that, that's going to be really really tanky yeah okay so th this actually honestly funny enough this actually sounds stronger than the ability than the version of it that i gave yeah, literally kinda, like, yeah. you, you can activate it at will not not based on your opponent's t uh transgression and it, it, if it follows you then yeah that, that's way stronger so dang yeah well i mean basically if you're ever on top of someone doing damage you're gonna have this active and that is very very strong it's basically a passive that's also a, a little bit active um but you're gonna have I, I would expect that the uptime on this is pretty good depending on if it has like a cooldown um i guess we'll have to kind of wait and see for that but regardless you're, you're gonna be able to manage and, and keep this up whenever you want to be in a fight and that's gonna be really strong right all right so let's see here so let's see first starting move bite okay so this is probably his larvitar deals mm -hmm. damage to opposing pokemon if the pokemon is hp is Below a set percentage when attack, it becomes stunned. Interesting. Yeah, so just like a little, probably a close range bite that that has the option to stun someone. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. So, so like, but, but yeah, when, when its HP is below a set percentage. Yeah, I wonder what the percentage is. You know, yeah, it's pretty like vague as half, as or... they do. Yeah. Like, I imagine it can't be that low because I feel like at that point it would just it would just KO. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's not gonna be super low, but um. I don't know, maybe 20%, 25%, somewhere in that range, just so you can kind of, like, get a bite in and stun at the same time. Right. All right, so let's see. First move to replace bite, Dark Pulse. Okay. Exhales a mist of darkness in a horizontal sweeping motion. Deals damage to any Pokemon it hits. If the hit Pokemon is below a set percentage of HP, the en the enemy Pokemon becomes confused or stunned. Okay. And when upgraded, the move's cooldown is reduced. Okay, so I guess they're basing Tyranitar off of... They're, they're, they're giving it a gimmick around that, that goes around how much HP the opponent has? Yeah, a little bit. It, it, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, something you'll, you may go into a fight and, like, Dark Pulse, and then as the fight continues on, you get, like, say, a second Dark Pulse, and then you can use that, and then hopefully stun. 
the other thing about this is that because it's a primary move and it's based on the percentage of the HP of the character, it could be something like 50% HP because they want to guarantee that this move is getting value just from like a concept design or like from a design standpoint. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's like an even 50% now based on the way that it's written where basically if you have someone even relatively low, you're going to be able to get a stun on them. Yeah. And that's kind of like where the character CC will come from. Um, as far as the, so kind of like referencing back to the one year anniversary trailer that they gave us, I think that the move that we saw was this Dark Pulse. So we saw the passive on Tyranitar, and I think we saw the Dark Pulse as well, um, because it was kind of like a sweeping, uh, like pulse of like, kind of like flames or mist, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Was it? And... I, I, I don't, I actually don't, I actually don't even remember that. Yeah. I, you'll I, have I, to, I remember I mean, seeing that trailer, but I don't, I don't remember seeing Tyranitar in it. Oh, uh, it's literally Tyranitar like a, gameplay, it's like a one second clip in, in the oh, trailer. Okay. So, um, yeah, it just kind of like sneaks in there, but yeah, I think that, think that that's what this is. And then uh, for the upgrade, it's, it's a pretty simple thing that they do. They usually will make like a, an idea for an uh, ability. And then one of the upgrade abilities is basically like the same thing, just like enhanced. Yeah. So that's what they're going for with like bite to dark pulse. And then the upgrade itself is um, just reduced move cooldown. So yeah, it's pretty pretty simple upgrade for them to add to the game. Right. It's like I would like to I would like to yeah I'd like to imagine though like this is definitely gonna be like a, a nasty like like crowd control move especially like if you're like in a situation where it's like if you can somehow get the entire team like in a team fight exactly. like like below half like you can you can effectively hold them all still. And that's, and that's why I'm thinking the percentage will probably be half, because if it's too low, then you're not going to be able to guarantee value on this ability. Well, I mean, outside of just doing damage, but they wouldn't build in a stun if they weren't going to try to make it to where you're actually stunning with it. So I think that it would be surprising to see it any lower than 50%, maybe like 45, 40%, but that's just a weird number. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that what we're going to be seeing is like Tyranitar is really like walking into the team fight and stunning, you know, anywhere between two to, to five enemies, which would be really, really crazy. Okay. And, I, and I, it's, what's interesting, I do see, I, I actually do see the synergy between Bite and, and Dark Pulse here because uh, they got, they're both in, in, in Pokemon games, these are both dark type moves that, um, have the ability to cause Pokemon to flinch, so I, I can yeah. see the correlation there. Why, why, why they would choose to have kind of yeah, ha, yeah, like, like 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 you said before, have have these two kind of be like the um the ones that are like like bite is like like Dark Pulse is like the upgrade of bite. So yeah, yeah, okay. okay. All right, so the next move, Ancient Power. That's an interesting choice. Charges power before releasing a Shockwave, deals damage to nearby Pokemon and leaves them unable to act for a short time. While charging pow power. The user's movement speed increases, it gains a shield, and it, it gains resistances, and it and this ignores defense and shield effects? Wait a minute, why does this sound okay. so much better than Dark Pulse? This, What's the caveat yeah, here? Yeah, this, uh, this ability sounds crazy. Why did, like, this just sounds like Dark Pulse on steroids. Why is this, because releases a shot, so... That that t a shockwave tells me like a, it's like a giant like radial AOE around itself. Then. Yeah, def it definitely is going to be that. It's funny because as you were reading it, I'm following along with the text, and it, I I read like while charging power, the user's movement speed, and I was expecting it to say decreases, and then you read increases, and it's like oh okay, so you charge up this giant shield that gives you resistances, you run fast and run into them, and then when it pops, it's gonna also ignore their defense and shield effects. And that That's and that also adds and to its upgrade, where its upgrade strengthens the effects of the shield that it get, that it gives itself. And, okay. And it is basically a mini stun, which it doesn't say stun in this instance for the, like, the actual effect, but it says leaves them unable to act for a short time. So this sounds really ridiculous. Like, th th there's some caveat here that we're missing, I feel, because ancient Definitely. power in, in the games is a move where it's like normally it's like it's like this weak move, but it has like a really low chance, um, randomly to raise every single one of your stats. So that's probably what that what, that, what that's referencing here. Um, what what's interesting though, I, I'm curious what it, what it means. I, I, now I'm curious why would why would you want to use Dark Pulse over this? The only thing I can think of yeah. possibly is that the especially since the stun on Dark Pulse requires such a real, a very has like a very specific like um requirement. I'm wondering if the stun from Dark Pulse is like really long compared to Ancient Power, or it might just be like a really like quick hold still. Either that, or or the only other thing I could think of is um, Ancient Power's AOE radius may not be super big, so it might be like more of like a one to two user kind of AOE as opposed to like say, you know, like a Dragon Pulse on Duraludon or something like yeah. that. So we'll, we'll definitely have to see like 
because it because on text it definitely sounds way better than dark pulse but th there's definitely a, a thing that we're gonna be like ah okay i get it yeah okay that's really interesting though because yeah there's no way to read that without just being like wait what wait, <laughs> wait what <laughs> okay so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll have to Ho ho I'm hoping there's some caveats. Otherwise, yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna get like another like sludge bomb situation or like yeah. what else? Like, like, yeah. Anyway, okay. So let's see. So here's its its, it's next its next uh, like pull of moves. Its other starting move is Rock Polish. So this is normally a move that uh, that effectively doubles a Rock Pokemon's speed. Has yeah. the user charge ahead in a designated direction, dealing damage to any Pokemon it hits. If it hits up an opposing Pokemon, the user's attack is increased afterwards by a short time. They took some liberties on Rock Polish, but I'm not complaining. Yeah. So it has a dash. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's funny because, like, the speed stat in Pokemon just does not carry over to Unite basically at all. And so I think that it, it definitely makes sense to take a little bit of liberties with, say, something that's like, oh, well, if you have a move that increases their speed in Pokemon Unite, it could just be a dash, right? Like, that, that's yeah. speed, right? It's it's displacing yourself. So that's cool. I, I definitely see that as, like, the the first part of Tyranitar's kit is going to be, like, the this is where we are, we're fighting. And the second part is probably going to be, like, the engage or, or something like that. So, yeah. um, okay, cool. All right. So then the first move to replace Rock Polish Wish, Stone Edge. Okay, so so far the the, the looking looking ahead at this list, the only move that that's actually similar to my concept. All right. Mm -hmm. Deals damage to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect. Dealing more damage the closer the opposing Pokemon is to the user, this move has multiple charges. And when upgraded, deals increased damage or increases the damage dealt by the move. Okay, so I was definitely wrong because that's not like an initiation move at all. It doesn't seem like... Um... Interesting. Tyranitar really just kind of seems like the, the kind of Pokemon that's going to, like, X speed into your face and then start brawling out with you. Yeah. So, depending on, like, the AoE of, like, Ancient Power or depending on, like, the range of Dark Pulse, you're really going to have to, like, get in there and then start trying to use Stone Edge if you decide to use that. So, okay. I'm curious what the actual area of effect is, though, because it, it, all, all this says is, yeah, like, like in the area of effects. Like, what's... It, like it says closer to the user, which is funny because that's kind of the opposite of my concept. Because I, I, I'm because my Stone Edge literally it, it's like a um like like a, like a like a path that tra like a domino effect that travels around with the final one like coming out being largest. So the more powerful one's actually furthest away. Here it's like it's more powerful when it's closer. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, but I, I imagine what what, what I'm tr I'm trying to imagine what this probably looks like in my head. Cause yeah. So cause um. Stone Edge is literally a move where like rocks like erupt from the ground, like like into the air, like like giant like like giant rock spikes. Um, so I'm I'm imagining it probably just surrounds itself like like with, 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 with like it's almost barrier like, like I guess like this barrier of like stalagmites that just stick out of the ground around itself. So kind of like I, I guess like like imagine earthquake, but instead of just like the ground shaking, it's just like rocks that come up, like or I should say Garchomp's earthquake, I should say. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what the, what the actual area of effect is because it doesn't quite specify. But based on the, the rest of the description, th that's what I'm thinking it might be that it probably just surrounds it, like its entire body with these rocks. Hmm. Yeah, really interesting. Okay. So then the other move is Sand Tomb. Has the user leap into a single bound? So here's its. I guess this is. I guess this is probably going to be its upgrade to Rock Polish then. Uh, has the user leap in a single bound, dealing damage to any Pokemon it hits while leaping and stunning them. When the user lands, it creates a cloud of dust at the point of impact. Ign uh, and, and it ignores defenses and shield effects. Okay. <laughs> I wonder I wonder how many of... Like, why are we not just using Ancient Power Sand too? <laughs> yeah. And then, like, when upgraded, increases the length of time the cloud dust remains at the point of impact. Well, okay. wait a minute. So, based on because ba looking back, the sand stream that that's a move that activates whenever you whenever you use any of your moves. So, yeah, sand tomb is literally designed uh, is, is effectively designed to like get you in, activate sand stream, and then yeah 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 like stun them in place while also dealing a ton of chip damage while probably also a pressing them to death. Like it just it, yeah this the kit seems so interesting because. 
the second path of the kit, like Ancient Power Sand Tomb, just sounds so strong to me. Yeah. Like, like, leap in with Sand Tomb, your passive Sand Stream's gonna go off, and then you start rushing them down with Ancient Power, and both of which are gonna ignore defense and shields. It sounds really, really interesting that Sand Tomb and Ancient Power to me just seem way stronger than the other part of the kit. Not to mention, literally both of them, yeah, ignore defenses and shield effects. Exactly. Like, I could maybe see them being split or having that... Like, if you put the ignore defenses and shield effects on one side of the abilities where you can only get one of those, that would be interesting. But to give it to it, like, to give the abilities where you can have two of those moves that do that it is really interesting. I think... I think, like I said, I definitely think there's some caveat or nuance that we, we maybe can't see until we feel the character, like, under our hands, but that's really interesting on paper. Yeah. Because, um, like, 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 just based on this, like, on this alone, I'm, I'm already imagining, like, literally, like, you just sand two men, like, you know, stun them, ancient power, stun them again, and you start, and, and then while your moves are sitting here, while, while you're getting buffed up from ancient power with, your, with, these, with these shields... You know, you're also dealing a ton of chip damage between both Sand Tomb and Sand Stream, and you're just wailing on them. Like that—that that, that, just, that seems like what they're going for here with with, with with that kit. Yeah, for sure. Which I will go ahead and say that sounds very much like the like the rampagey style that I'm kind of, that I was kind of hoping for. So I'm I'm kind of glad to see yeah. that. I'm, I'm almost disappointed with how D Dark Pulse and Stonehenge are sounding. But again, there's probably something we just we're missing here. They're, like, they're probably like very simple moves like like when you read them they're like okay that's simple i understand it but it may be just way stronger than we realize right like maybe and that's the thing like with dark pulse what if the percentage for that particular move is really high like oh if they're at 80 percent health you guarantee a stun right. so like dark pulse may be way better than we're thinking just because we don't know the exact details of it um but yeah we'll, we'll definitely have to see and and for stone edge that could have like some crazy massive AOE to it, or it could have like five charges. So we'll just have to wait and see like what that exact means, uh, what that exactly means for these moves. But yeah, Sand Tomb Ancient Power, if I had to, if someone forced me to pick my, my preferred build going in day one, it would probably be that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. All right, so we finally have the Unite move. Tyrannical Rampage, already liking the fact that the name has Rampage in the name. Mm-hmm. User rampages, increasing movement speed for a short time, hindrances return the user back to normal faster. While rampaging, its basic attack pattern changes, and the Pokemon that are hit while having low having HP below a certain percentage are immediately KO'd? Yep. This is the thing that I basically had spoiled, and I, I read that, and I was like, wait, okay. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely a, a hint of execute and ignoring and really just getting in and, and being a menace and, and knocking people out this percentage will absolutely be low it has um, be. otherwise it would just be busted it's probably going to be like around five percent but the thing is is if you have an all-rounder diving the back line on say a pikachu five percent is a you know a lot. you're gonna get it you're gonna you're gonna get it down there and just boom just knock it out of the game so tyranitar on paper as a concept the design seems insane like really really ridiculous design yeah like um i'm i'm just i'm still just stunned by this yeah it, it's it sounds like a much more powerful version of dragonite's outrage because it literally says it like does. while rampaging it's basic it's basic attack patterns change so it, i guess it has a completely different kind of basic attack while it uses this but it also sounds like you need to be very yeah this, this definitely sounds this you're right though this definitely sounds like a backline unite because it even says here the more you get hindered the the, the faster you'll go back return to normal so you could end up wa wasting this unite move if you try to dive in against five people at once yeah i think the the scary part of this kit for me is that if you read all the way back to Sandstream, it increases the Pokemon's defense and SP defense by 65%. This could be an all-rounder that you intentionally don't put a lot of damage on in terms of your itemization and, and even like the emblem system because of the fact that it's so based on the enemy's HP as opposed to what damage you have yourself. Yeah. So I don't really see myself building crit items on this character or character or maybe even stacking like a weakness policy unless some of the scalings are really really high maybe a weakness policy would be good but like an attack weight i'm not sure if i would throw on this character just depending on the laning phase because you really could put something like 
You could go with a very beefy build with like say weakness policy focus band buddy barrier, dive the back line and you're getting all your damage because of the fact that you're staying alive by increasing your defense and SP defense. You're staying alive because you're tanky and then you when you you and your team are getting them low, then you're getting all these additional effects by, you know, having their percentage HP so like lower or meeting these requirements for these moves. So Tyranitar sounds inherently tanky to me while also being able to really um, kind of destroy a team and, and kind of dismantle them. Yeah. I'm curious exactly what it means, though, when it says that its basic attack, attack batter, pattern changes. Yeah, that's... I mean, I can only imagine it's kind of similar to, um, like, Dragonite, like you said. And, and I think this whole this whole kit feels very outrage, Garchomp-esque, right? Like, where you, you, like I think that that makes sense for Tyranitar in general. Yeah. Um, to just, like, run in and, and, and be a monster. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for the yeah, I'm, I'm, for the most part, I am pretty happy with with what with, 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 with what I'm looking at here. Again, Dark Pulse and Stone Age, I'm still kind of iffy about. But we actually we actually really yeah. need to see what they what they look like before I, I make a final decision on that. Like, but overall, though, though, no, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I I'm I'm, I'm wondering what the basic attack is though, because based on the sound of all of this, and unless it does have stacking moves, it just has nothing to do with the moves itself. But like. It, it, it probably just, it might just probably have like like a normal three hit three hit basic attack, but um, I'm I'm almost wondering what the basic attack does then, because I feel I feel like the boosted auto is pretty important for a lot of Pokemon, and I feel like that that, that can be a huge uh, like a huge factor here, like what the boosted yeah, attack does. Yeah, it, it definitely can, and I I was gonna say I don't know if we if we have any of that information or if if anybody else has seen it, but this is what I had sent to me by Teeds and. Uh... It'll be it'll be interesting to see what it uh what it all comes together because yeah we definitely might be missing like a little bit of context for sure yeah o overall though like I I, I I am fairly happy with how this looks because yeah like Tyranitar it's like it's something I actually forgot to mention regarding Tyranitar not only is it supposed to be like this rampaging monster it's supposed to be unstoppable like its armor is designed literally like, like talked about obviously not in games that'd be busted but it's talked about as like nothing can scratch its armor like it, it's supposed yeah. to be like this. Like, like this unstoppable like juggernaut so yeah, i definitely think that that's kind of like i, I guess built into the, the sand stream right like you're, you're just raising your defenses by 65 percent. i mean that's a that's a large amount so yeah really interesting okay all right well i think overall like so, so yeah definitely a different direction than, than the concept that i thought of but I, I, but i'm not this I, i'm not disappointed like I, we still have to see the, the Pokemon in action, obviously. But yeah, like based on the actual concept of the moves, like no, I I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I agree. I think it looks really fun. Um, I'm excited to see more footage. We're going to be getting Tyranitar added to the public test server on Monday, uh, I believe. There was like a, a post about that Monday oh. the 18th. Hopefully that's correct. Oh, cool. And so okay. we should be able to get some gameplay of that here in the near future. All right. I guess we'll have to... Uh, like I'm not sure if I'll be able to take part in that, but I, like uh, I'll, def I'll definitely yeah look, like look forward to like the footage that like like, like you or like Chris will be p posting up like yeah for all sure. That. All right, cool. All right, uh, I guess in which case uh, th that's probably a, this is probably a pretty good stopping point. So I, I guess before we end things off, let me go to the um, Tyranitar's uh, request list and quickly read off the first 20 people that requested for me to make the uh, the, the concept for him. Uh, so overall, he's had 45 requests, technically 44, but someone requested for Larvitar by itself. Uh, so the first 20 people that requested for Tyranitar, miles 124 Ospum. sorry if I pronounce, mispronounce these names, it, there's literally, literally a P there, uh, Dylan Mama, Samen Lucas Fi uh, uh, Fiaria Riberio, Jeremy Nelly, Bog, Bog G Master Zion obst 3 r 98 the Reem X, Good Helmet Jr., Confetti Powers, Steven uh, Kisneros, Starlight Magician, Dat Boy Dat Is Me 123, George Palo Jallo, Marsh Marsh Al Animal Crossing, or Marshall Animal Crossing, sorry, uh, Elamom Ian Alpha, Jigglypuff, just Jigglypuff, okay, Ascended Shadow. Capros uh, Suchuk 2394, Gamer Julian 94, Hylian Guy 38, and and David uh, to, uh, Taborda. And then the one person to ask for Larvitar was Grunkle G. Alrighty, cool. 
well, this was this was this was definitely a lot of fun. Like, uh, thank thank you so much for joining me, Crashy. Yeah, absolutely. I had a lot of fun doing it and uh, looking at the concept and looking forward to doing more concept stuff and you know just covering more Pokemon Unite stuff. Yeah, definitely. Like, so uh, ho hopefully I I'm aiming for episode ten of Pokemon Unite to be coming out. I'm hoping this uh, this coming Thursday or Friday. We'll see. Dep depends on uh, how much I can get done by then. Uh, but. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If, uh, uh, if, if you guys enjoyed it, I would, be, I would be more than happy to, uh, to do more in the future. Like, and, and if, if you guys enjoyed Crashy, I would, be, I would be more than happy to bring him back on if he, if, if he would like. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, well, uh, Crashy, do you have any final words? No, just thanks so much for having me. And, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Yeah. Thank you all th so much for watching. Go, uh, be sure to go check out Crashy's channel. He is, he, he, uh, he, he, uh, he, he, he streams regularly. He, he, he posts a lot of content. He's also, he, he's also trying to branch off a little bit into other stuff too. So definitely be sure to, uh, you know, support, support whatever he does over there as well. In which case, uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Stay, st stay safe and take care.